morning here. It's time for uh, Rosie's uh, 4,000 mile checkup. Uh, be some uh, oil changes, no filters this time. Oil change on the engine, oil change on the uh, silent chain on the uh, output drive, and then another uh, regular tune up and check. And uh, this time we'll have to take out the filters for the uh, variator on the left and right hand side. So uh, you got your handy dandy manual out. The tools you have that came with your tools. It doesn't kit. take much in the way of tools to work on these things as long as you're staying outside of uh, major uh, components. But even then, uh, it's pretty standard on the sizing. I did add, uh, since the last time I've uh, done something, was a, a set of T handles in the metric that go from uh, 2 millimeters up to 10 millimeters. And then we'll be using this for the first time, our spark plug wrench. Uh, and then our handy dandy uh, spatula or paint uh, can scraper here for using as a pry bar. So, one of the things I didn't get into last time was uh, on this, the side panels here on the, on the uh, very front that have the uh, turn, tuning fork symbol on them. Uh, there are one, two, three uh, of those little pop pins, pop rivets or whatever you want to call them, in here that need to come out before you can take them off and then they pretty much pop off. I believe there's a couple, couple screws on the back on the back side. Also I've been using my handy dandy little uh, nail that I've been over to 90 degrees which makes it easy to get up in and to pull these things out as to trying to push them in straight with uh, with a straight tool so uh, we've got those three out and the front part of this panel is loose now so we'll get the rest of it off. Okay we've got the three uh, pop pins off the, on the bottom and then there's uh, two screws on underneath the metal plate on these side panels, left and right. The only tricky part is is getting this corner off. Up in here where this thing fits into the yellow part here, these two clips can be really, really tender on that upper upper inside. So now I got both the left and the right off. Okay, on these lower side panels, you got a screw in the front up in here and one in the back on the outside. This one's covered up by that first side panel. This one's on the outside, and you got three along the foot pieces, or the underneath the footrests. And then you have more more push pins on the bottom here. Let me come back. Okay, there was uh, a screw underneath that I kind of hidden, and then that one push pin, and then this is the side that has that that double flap on it that you won't really come across. Uh, on the other side and then you have to do a little bit of taking apart and putting back together this little piece that goes underneath but it's off. One thing you want, I've no, I was going to do is when I get this all completely tore apart and uh, get done doing everything and finish everything then I'm going to give it a bath before I put the panels on and clean off the inside of the panels because they're starting to pick up some crud that uh, won't come off unless you pull the panels off and clean them that way. I saw a photo on um, the Maxi Muppet side of a Bergman that somebody was working on and the whole underside of it after he pulled the panels off was just filthy with dirt and crud and, and road grime and all that that uh, doesn't do the scoot any, any good if you uh, leave it in there so uh, on to the next one. Okay we got this panel off now and this is the one I think uh, that I'll re you'll remember on the, the first set of panel pulling videos I had that said that this is that push pin that's a different size that ties from this left hand lower panel into the uh, left hand side of the bottom crowling so you make sure to stick it back in that hole so you don't get it confused or lost because the weather will just fall out again. So uh, let me continue on. Get pretty close. This won't take long when you have a somewhat good idea of what you're doing. Later. Okay the other thing you have to do is to pull these little guys open to get your ignition the uh, wire that goes down to your uh, coil that goes for the spark plugs. And all you have to okay here's another reason uh, to go ahead and take these things off as opposed to breaking out. Uh, it's handy to you know cut out something like this to get into the spark plugs, but by pulling this off, it's. I hadn't been wasting my time doing this, I would have had all this off in probably uh, 15 minutes or less. It's getting really fast now. Uh, there was two little push pins down here on the bottom, I keep forgetting, that uh, go into the metal uh, that holds the bottom of the radiator. And another good thing to take it off is I'm noticing some debris in the radiator that uh, if you don't take this off, you really can't get in to clean it out. Also, the underside of this needs a good, a good washing, a washing. So, and good for check for cracks. 
and it's a 4,000 mile checkup is the time that you want to be doing uh, the loose nuts and bolts checkup too for the first time uh, and also give you a really good understanding of what it looks like and how the thing, your scoot works. So uh, i got a couple more panels to take off to get down into the uh, variator filters on the left and right hand side and then we'll continue. This is the first time I've had to take off the people have been calling this the boomerang for some reason and the blue people seem to be painting them black. I don't know, I think I'd just go down to the uh, Yamaha dealer and buy a set of black from the uh, 500 uh, YYs, the yellow ones, and then keep your uh, silver ones silver. But we got to get that off in order to get down into here where the filter is in behind this. So we're going to take off this next side panel, which I haven't taken off before, but it's pretty simple. It's just the mirror image of the other side. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, we got this side panel off. I keep forgetting there's a screw up on top but by the air box on both sides, but uh, just just gently work them out and then you've got the little prongs that go in underneath the footrest where the metal plate is. So now we're down to the filter and uh, it's got some uh, dirt on it so we'll be cleaning that uh, when we get around to it. The other thing you want to remember is uh, on this end of this thing you've got a little clip in here that the emergency brake, nope it's the uh, uh, hydraulic line uh, for the rear brake goes through so you want to be careful of it in here. But we're down to uh, down to gold. I've only got one more, uh, a couple more panels to pull off on the other side uh, over the uh, variator filter on the right hand side and we'll go over and go ahead and do that right now. Okay, one of the things I'm finding is that this, uh, these two screws that go in to hold this cover on are really, really tight so uh, you're going to have to uh, get in a, in a bigger screwdriver. The little uh, one that comes in the toolkit just doesn't have the size uh, and these are pretty tough, pretty tough screws. So they they showed some signs that uh, the factory had uh, torqued them down pretty good because there was a little bit of of uh, paint kit chipped off around the edges. So we'll get that guy off here. Aha! Take a look at the service manual and find out what comes off next. Well, we're having one of those. Uh, big wheel turning mechanical moments. Uh, there's two screws that go on to the uh, the cover plate here and then there's three screws underneath it to hold the case on over the air filter. These weren't that easy to get off. They're only supposed to be on at like five foot pounds but uh, I had to break out my big gun screwdriver to get it off. Well, I got one to come off on the case itself loose. I had one I was able to get off with my, um, uh, when you pound, you know, twist and pound it in, it, it drives it in and twists at the same time because I couldn't get the screwdriver to stay on. I even had to modify the tip to make it a tight fit. Well, I got one in there that's not coming out. I'm going to have to drill that thing out. So uh, that's about <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go on and do some other stuff and then come back to this. This is just a, a nightmare. They shouldn't be Phillips head screws anyway. They should be a, a torque screw, if not uh, an Allen wrench, or at least a torque screw if you're going to have something with, with uh, high tech or with um, tension on it. Uh, and it's like I said, it's 5.1 foot pounds. And this one right here that I did get out has got shades of green around it, which makes me think that the little idiot at the Yamaha factory put Loctite on it, the green Loctite. Why? It's got, a, it's, it's got a rubber housing on it to hold it in place. Five foot-pounds. You don't need a Loctite to hold it in. That's probably why the mechanics at the Yamaha dealers hate these things, because the uh, factory is screwing them over. So now I've got to uh, figure out what to do. So uh, this is going to be the end of this video. We'll come back later when I'm in a better mood.